Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. This week, I hit another comic book store. It was called Red Skull Comics. Now, I have not had a chance to post that video yet because it needs some tweaks, but I will post it later this week. But I did want to show you guys what I bought from the location. So it's a bit of a spoiler for the next video, but that's okay. It is Mr. Freeze from Batman the Animated Series. Now, I'm really excited about this. I'm going to unbox it today get it out, play with it a little bit, take some photographs. But of course, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button, smash the subscribe for me if you haven't already, and let's just get into it. So here we have him, Mr. Freeze, or Victor Freeze, as he goes by. I love this character. The first time I saw this character, I believe, was in the third episode of Batman the Animated Series, and the episode was called Heart of Ice. Now, it was a wonderful episode because, unlike some of the other Batman villains that are out there, Victor Freeze was not always a villain, but his wife was dying, and he needed to find a way to try and save her life and preserve her until he could find a cure. Now, the devastating part is, is he had an accident, which caused him to have the skin tone he has and to have to wear this suit in order to preserve his own life while he still looks for ways to save his lovely wife, Nora. And he ultimately becomes a villain in his attempts to gain all of the technology, gain all of the material that's required in order to preserve her and save her life. And I thought that that was a crazy, awesome way to have a story for a character because it makes you feel for them. For me, villains that you can relate with, but ultimately still become villains, are some of my favorite of all time. Now, in toy form, this guy stood out to me. When I saw him on the shelf at Red Skull Comics this week, I had to buy them. I had to have them in my collection. And just like the other figures, if you want to preserve the box, you can. There's some tape on the back here. You can slide a knife down the edge of the plastic and kind of pull the card away from the plastic so you can pull the figure out of the box. Now, I personally likely will not keep this box. It doesn't have the artistic style that I would honestly need in my collection. <laughs> and I'm trying to get away from hoarding boxes. I do that enough with my sixth scale collection. But as you can see, if you cleanly pull it away from the card and you wanted to reseal it, you could kind of get away with it while still having a chance to pull the figure out and take a better look. But I want to get them out of the box and take a better look myself. Now I apologize, there's going to be a little bit of glare in this video because of his helmet and because of some of the plastic right now. There's nothing I can do about that, but I'll try and give you guys the best clarity possible. Here's a better look at the figure without that plastic box cover at least. And I think he's really, really cool. His helmet pops off, no problem. His arms are kind of unique because it they almost look like they're backwards. The way that the joints pull around the uniform, or I should say around the suit, make it so that it's extremely challenging to move his arms because they don't really want to bend around his outfit very well. The winter boots that he's got on, I think are kind of cute. And I like that it has a wider base on the foot. So as you can see already, he can actually stand by himself technically without a figure stand, which is awesome. Now, Again, I almost thought these arms were backwards. When I first pulled him out of the box, his arms bend better backwards than they do forwards, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But I, it's clearly just the design of this figure. <laughs> so what can you really do, right? Uh, it's more of an observation than anything. Uh, I think when he's posed with his arms down on his side like this, I still, I still think he looks really cool. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna futz with him a little bit here. His legs are stick thin, but again, it matches the aesthetic of the cartoon, which is badass. Look at him up close, though. You see the red in his eyes. The skin looks really cool. I think he's well painted. I like the cell shading kind of look to these figures. It's always been some of my favorite parts. The hands that he come with are pretty basic. They really just have one paint job applied, 
and the fingers kind of look a little stuck together. The wrist pegs are also really tiny and delicate. So if you're going to swap the hands in and out, I would recommend using a hairdryer or something to warm up the pegs just ever so slightly so you don't accidentally snap them, of course. Now, despite having this guy having a bit of a wide boot, he actually does come with a really nice figure stand and base. I love the imagery on that. It's matching the aesthetic of what we saw with the Harley Quinn. It does have that clear waist grabber and pull, so that's really nice. Personally, I don't like to use figure stands with my figures, but I like that they included it. For the price point, I think that's a really nice inclusion. Now there's these parts. They look like mechanical spider legs. In the instructions, there is zero indication as to where these actually go in the figure. I couldn't find any ports on him at all, so I was really confused. But I'm going to skip ahead because we're going to get there in a couple minutes. Lastly, he comes with this gun. It's very basic in its paint job, but you can see that it comes with a hand that holds it, which is good enough for me. And I think it looks really cool when it's attached to the figure. It looks exactly like a Mr. Freeze gun that he would have. I think that's really nice. Now again, he comes with the pegs on the bottom of his feet. So if you don't want to use the figure base that he comes with, because you can see the figure base has no peg ends, you could actually technically get him a matching saucer base, something like the Batman came with, so that they would all match each other, especially since these are slightly different lines, even though they're meant to be kind of within the same universe of characters, of course. But again, since he stands by himself, it's not necessarily needed. Now let's figure out where the heck these spider legs go. Because again, you can see, there's not really any ports on them. I thought maybe on the butt there and on the front, but it didn't fit there. So I'm thinking, what the heck, right? Where does this go? Of course, then I pop off the helmet and see these. And immediately I was like, okay, okay. But just a forewarning trying to get these popped into the figure base head there created a ton of tension even with a hair dryer i almost snapped them several times so be extremely careful but look how cool this looks dang i love it i actually love it i did not realize this figure came with these and i am so stoked what a cool way just to display the figure if you want now again i almost broke these trying to get them in so be really, really careful if you guys do it. And it's actually extremely hard to do. Even with the hairdryer, as I said, I, it hurt my fingers trying to press it in the holes. So be careful. But they have some posability, they have some movement, and it holds the figurehead extremely well. And I think it looks really cool. <laughs> I love it. So, again, didn't know this came in the box. Quite a nice little surprise with the figure. What a cool way to, to display them. This, to me, for whatever reason, I don't remember the scene in any of the shows of the animated series. So if you guys remember an episode where these legs were featured, I'd love for you to share that with me because I want to go back and kind of revisit that. But yeah, that's cool. That's real cool. I'm debating. Do I display him like this or do I display him as kind of the regular figure? You can see on the top here, his head just kind of pegs in otherwise. It's pretty basic. It just makes it so that you can't really turn that neck collar piece. Because as soon as you start to turn it, it pops off. These are those holes that I was mentioning on the butt in the front. But clearly that's not where they're meant to be. This is the way she should go. Love it. If I were to rate this figure, I would honestly give him still a 9 out of 10. I think aesthetically, he looks amazing. The arms, how they bend, are weird. Like, that makes no sense. I, like, who designed the arms on this figure? I honestly thought for a second maybe it was second hand, and somebody put the arms on the wrong sides. Literally, that's how little it makes sense. But sure enough, I tried looking at the arms out where the shoulder joints are, and that's not the case. This is just how it comes standard in the box. But standing there, I think it's really cool. And pairing him with, you know, the Joker, for example, the coloration is perfect. He looks perfectly canon, in my opinion, to the animated series. I am really happy with this guy. I love the accessories that he comes with. I virtually have no complaints. If you are looking for Batman the Animated Series figures and you come across this guy, in my opinion, he is a must-buy for this price. But what do you guys think? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you like this figure? Are you going to go hunting for him yourself? If not, that's okay. 
I love them from my collection. <laughs> but I would love it if you guys hit the like button, smash the subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and thanks for watching the video, everybody. Have a great long weekend. Be very safe. And make sure you guys keep an eye out for the toy hunt at Red Skull Comics where I picked this guy up from. It'll be aired this week. It's a sweet one. Thanks for watching again, guys. Catch you on the next video.